Hello friends, Steve Dangle here and welcome to the 2022 NHL trade deadline. There's been lots of movement already in the days leading up to the trade deadline, but we get our first major move of the day and that is... Marc-Andre Fleury going from the Chicago Blackhawks to the Minnesota Wild. Now this has been rumored for a couple days, but now it's finally official. Marc-Andre Fleury joining the Minnesota Wild, and it looks like there will be a tandem of Marc-Andre Fleury and Cam Talbot. Now it hasn't all been sunshine and rainbows for Cam Talbot this season with a 907 save percentage. It's not great, it's not horrible, but it's there. Despite that, he has a 24-12-1 record. We all know what Marc-Andre Fleury is capable of, and if he is able to get to that level, Holy smokes, the Minnesota Wild are a wagon. So what did the Minnesota Wild give up? The answer is they give up a conditional second round pick to the Chicago Blackhawks who make off like bandits here. And the reason I say that isn't because I think it's a huge haul for Fleury. In fact, I thought Marc-Andre Fleury would cost a lot more than that, but you gotta take everything into consideration. Last season, Marc-Andre Fleury, then with the Vegas Golden Knights, that's now three teams ago, he won the Vesna Trophy as the best goalie in the NHL. Is that good? Can anyone tell me if that's good? Despite all that, the only team the Vegas Golden Knights were able to find to take on the entire $7 million cap hit was the Chicago Blackhawks, and they essentially got him for nothing. Well, it wasn't literally nothing. Marc-Andre Fleury was traded straight up for a player. Do you remember that player? If I gave you 10 seconds starting right now, I'll even kill time for you. You have 10 seconds to remember the player who was traded for Marc-Andre Fleury. Don't text me in the middle of this video. Who was it? Three, two, one. Did you guess Mikhail Hakkarainen? Well, that's who it was, and they are no longer with the Vegas Golden Knights, if you were curious. Now, last offseason, the Chicago Blackhawks, they go out and they get Seth Jones, probably because the Chicago Blackhawks thought they were going to be better than they ended up being, and it's not like that's Marc-Andre Fleury's fault. Even though it didn't work out in terms of success in the standings, the Blackhawks, once again, they got Fleury for a guy who was in the ECHL, and now they flip him for at least a second round pick, it could turn into a first based on playoff success for the Minnesota Wild. So, for the time being, Blackhawks fans, you're cheering for the Wild. So, Flurry being the starter for the Minnesota Wild and Talbot as the backup, oh, that's formidable. So now, what did the Minnesota Wild do with Capo Kakinen? A young up-and-coming goalie, a little up, a little down, but he's got time to get better. Well, the Minnesota Wild decided to trade him. They've been busy bees this morning. Kakinen was traded to the San Jose Sharks in exchange for a guy who had a big name in terms of the trade deadline picture, Jacob Middleton. Jacob Middleton has a name that you've probably heard floating out there over the past week or two. It looked like he was going to be going for like a second round pick because he's exactly the sort of player that teams covet around this time of year. Because he's a defenseman and he's big! Have you ever heard of a playoff bound team who wants a big defenseman? So instead of a second round pick that is magic beans and it will help the Sharks down the line if it ever does, they get a goalie who they can use in the NHL right away. So, Minnesota gets better at keeping the puck out of their net. They get Jacob Middleton, who should help in that regard, and Marc-Andre Fleury, who will really help in that regard. The San Jose Sharks, on the other hand, get Capo Kakinen, and that could potentially set up a James Reimer trade because his name has been floating around. And last but not least for this video, the Seattle Kraken haven't been around long enough to have tendencies, but one tendency they have is to give the Washington Capitals back their players. After taking goaltender Vitek Vanacek from the Capitals in the expansion draft, they traded him back for a second round pick. Now, the Washington Capitals have got Marcus Johansson from the Seattle Kraken in exchange for Daniel Sprong, a fourth and a sixth. Daniel Sprong's an interesting player, man. I, I think with more ice time in Seattle, he could surprise. I don't think he's ever really struggled to put up points or flash offensively. It's just can he put it together the whole package at the NHL level. But really, if the Seattle Kraken weren't going to keep Marcus Johansson around, why not at very least, if Sprung doesn't pan out, get a fourth and a sixth. The Kraken just continue to hoard picks 
picks. That's now 32 picks over the next three drafts, 21 of which are in the first four rounds. Now, I'm not an insider, but I'll wrap it up with a few things that I've heard. Andrew Kopp, I'm sure you've heard a lot out there about him. Uh, add the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Florida Panthers to the list of teams who want him. The Vancouver Canucks are trying to move Tanner Pearson, and they're also working on a Connor Garland trade. Tanner Pearson would be more of a cap dump. Connor Garland, though, they would expect to get a haul. And a final note that the waiver wire isn't going to clear up until 2 o'clock. The trade deadline is at 3. The final hour and the minutes that trickle by after it could be wild. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends the trade deadline is here. Stay with Sportsnet's YouTube channel. We'll have more.